Welcome to Gimbal Land. Occupied by thousands of Gimbal users like this one. Following the mating season, we're witnessing evolution at its finest. At one time, motors were unreliable and arms didn't lock in place. But as seasons have passed, creators are now benefiting from color touchscreen displays, Bluetooth control, auto locking, and improved motor stability, making it easier than ever for individuals to focus on capturing the action. For the first time, the baby RS3 is leaving the mother to embark on a creative voyage. So unfortunately, that's where my budget ran out for the David Attenborough voiceover, so I'll be taking it from here. And I know what you're thinking, it wasn't that long ago since DJ announced the last lineup of gimbals, so what's so great about the RS3 and the RS3 Pro? Well, that's what I'm gonna be discussing in this video because I'm gonna talk you through my favorite features of the new gimbals, what the upgrades actually are and how good they are, and then you can decide whether or not it's worth going for that upgrade or sticking with what you've got. And yes, if you haven't noticed, I'm actually vlogging using the gimbal right now because it's small enough and light enough in selfie mode. It's great. This is going to blow your mind. It's not going to do what I think it's going to do. <laughs> That's <laughs> men. That is men. I just had to show you this before we get stuck into the main video because it's just such a cool feature. Axis lock was one of the best features introduced into gimbals to stop the arms flapping about when you powered down the motors. But in the RS3, they've taken it to the next level and given us auto axis lock, taking kind of a 15 to 30 second thing into a press of a button. Does it go back into the... But it's also really handy for lens changes and rebalancing because there's two different types in sleep mode. So in sleep mode, you can either have it lock in position where it is, like you'd use the gimbal, and that's really handy if you've got cables plugged into external monitors and you don't want the motors to flip round and then pull on your cables. Or you can have it so that the arms aren't locked in place so it's nice and free moving and you can do your lens changes and it makes it quicker to rebalance if you need to. So it's good that they've given us the option to go and customize it the way we like to. Because to be honest, I use both of those different ways depending on what I need. So I've, that, I'm I've sorry, I'm still trying it. to recover from the fact that it locks itself and unlocks it's itself. We've got two new gimbals. The RS3 Pro is an upgrade from the RS2, and the RS3 is an upgrade from the RSC2. Although it may seem like not much has changed, the few minor additions do actually make a massive difference. And these new gimbals have been built for speed with people like you and I in mind, who tend to work alone or in small groups. Remember the folding design for briefcase mode on the RSC2? Now, I did think that was really good, but it was a little bit time consuming, especially to take it back out of briefcase mode. You had to sleep the motors and then pull it back in place, and it was just a little bit too close clunky for me. But now we've got this handle which is compact but folds out and clamps onto the gimbal. And that means I can switch from standard mode to briefcase mode nice and quickly without any messing about or unscrewing and screwing back on any tripods. Because quite honestly that was more hassle than it needed to be. But the other good thing about this handle is it makes it so much easier to carry around in between shots. Especially if you're at a wedding for example, there's a lot of time when you're not filming stuff and it's nice to put the motors in sleep mode and then you can just carry this round down by your side without having the weight of the whole camera above your wrist like we used to have to. We've also got a larger LCD touchscreen with bigger icons and a better menu system. And this makes changing modes so much quicker and easier. And you're not going to miss any of the action while you're fiddling around with the menus trying to get the right settings. We've now got a physical mode switch which makes it so much easier to switch modes. I do switch modes quite often to be honest when I'm using a gimbal. I might want to go from just the simple pan follow and no tilt into a tilt or an FPV mode really quickly. Then when you go into FPV mode, you can scroll across on the touch screen for portrait mode, 360 roll, and then FPV mode. And you can customize the dial to act as the roll, but I prefer using the joystick because it's a lot smoother. I didn't realize how much of a big difference that small change would, would, would make. Oh, my legs are getting a bit sore. Okay. It's not that comfy that log out the way. We've also got upgraded motors to the third generation stabilization algorithm, so that's better smoother motors. Bluetooth, so no more plugging cables in, although you do have to plug cables in for some of the things to work. But it'd be great when Bluetooth fully takes over and we control everything straight from the gimbal itself. There's only two reasons I can think of that you'd choose the RS3 Pro over the RS3. If you've got bigger cameras or heavier cameras, and if you want LiDAR. I've never tried LiDAR, but I really want to try it. I think it's the future of focusing 
amazing because the way it displays where your focus areas are is just incredible and I really want to have a go. So if you feel like you might get some heavier lenses in the future or a, a cinema camera, definitely go for the pro version. But if not, if you're just like me and you've got a smaller camera set up, then the RS3 is the way to go. What's most interesting though is I'm going to switch from the RS2, which is a bigger gimbal for heavier cameras, and I'm just going to be using the RS3. Because it's got those updated motors in, it gives you that extra stability and it's perfect for what I use. So I can trust this gimbal to not have any issues whatsoever with my camera setup. I'm going to be honest for a minute, right? I was starting to really not enjoy using gimbals. Balancing isn't a problem. Setting up and packing down and changing the modes was often an issue. But with the upgrades for the RS3 and the RS3 Pro, they've fixed everything. They've made it so much quicker to set up and pack down. If you've got the RS2 or the RSC2 and you feel like it's a little bit slow and it annoys you sometimes, then definitely upgrade to the RS3. You know what I would like to see, actually? The only change I would make to these gimbals, and I've wanted this for a while, I'm gonna disclose it now, and if it gets made, you'll know where it came from. But I'd love to see like a little wheel design, a, a really small one. You know the ring grips? Not that big, like this sort of size. Maybe it doesn't have to be a full ring. Maybe it could just stop there so you could still get the 360 roll. I'd love to see that in the next edition of these gimbals. By the way, if you enjoyed that little intro sequence and you wanna know how how to color grade in that way make sure you check out this video here because it's going to show you exactly how i approach color grading things not to do as well as things to do and it makes it nice and simple so go and check that one out